Well, I hope you're excited because I know I am. It's time for another triple threat video here on OTRS Central. And I think I've got some really good topics to talk about this week. I'm going to talk about hashtag give divas a chance, John Cena's merchandise sales, and Rey Mysterio's apparent departure from the WWE. I've always thought the WWE was incredibly idiotic for how they've treated their women over the years in their company. I've always felt they've undervalued them, incredibly underutilized them, and they've paid consequences and paid the price for doing so. I know women can play a very important, very valuable role to that company because they can appeal to female fans. Uh, female talents, divas, if you will, appeal to kids as well. They also appeal to males in the 18 to 34-year-old demographic. The older farts, too, they can technically appeal to everybody, which means ding-dong, dumb dicks, feature them, and make them stars because your product can tremendously benefit from them. So I thought it was hilarious when I saw the hardcore fans taking to social media last week <laughs> during Raw and afterwards when Paige was in a 30-second Divas tag match talking about hashtag give Divas a chance. <laughs> like all of a sudden, this is going to change anything. Like all of a sudden, the WWE is going to fucking give a fuck about the Divas or they're going to give them a chance or that they've ever really frankly cared to give them a chance, especially over the past 10 to 12 damn years. And furthermore, for these hardcore fans, are you just looking for that much of a reason to bitch about the WWE? Do you just have to have something to fill the void now that you've become resigned to the fact that Daniel Bryan's not made of any WrestleMania 31? You've become resigned to the fact and accept that WrestleMania 31 is going to be a largely forgettable, disappointing show, that you have to have something else. You need something to complain about. You need something to bitch about. So here are the divas. Here's your glamour girl, Paige, getting screwed over in a stupid 30-second test. Match, there you go, you got your opportunity to bitch and moan and complain. Well, the truth of the matter is, is even if the WWE did give the Divas a chance, and they did give them several storylines that really mattered and had consequence, and they actually gave them time to work in the ring, we would still be calling their matches piss breaks. Because the WWE has programmed us to do that over the years. Any, any male hardcore fan knows that the Divas match is the designated piss break on a show or on a freaking pay-per-view. Let's not pretend and deny that it's anything other than that. And we also know that if they did give these Divas more time, and if we did give them more segments, and if they did get longer matches, then we would be talking about how long and stupid and boring their fucking matches were, and we would be bitching about that as well. Talking about, we don't want to see Paige and AJ Lee, we want to see Tyson Kidd and Sami Zayn because they're two of the best wrestlers in the world. This whole give Divas a chance bullshit. Why all the fuck now do people care? And what all the fuck getting sudden is making supposed to make me believe that these hardcore fans that are bitching about this actually want to give the Divas a fucking chance. Don't give me that NXT bullshit, because that's down at NXT. That's a way for you to be counterculture within the confines of WWE. As soon as they did that shit on the main roster, as soon as they did that shit at the WWE level, as soon as they did that shit on Raw and SmackDown with pay-per-views, you fucking would be bitching about it too. So shame on the fans <laughs> for not being able to come up with something that's better and more consequential and more significant to rally around and bitch about. And shame on the WWE all these years later for being so backwards in their fucking business model, clearly not understanding the important role that women can play for their company, for their product, and for their brand. Shame on fucking everybody. Yeah, we should give the Divas a chance. But even if we did, and even if the WWE did, Everybody still find a fucking reason to bitch about them anyway, so what the fuck does it matter? If you're not going to care about the Divas and the fans aren't going to care about the Divas, then frankly, why have a fucking Divas division at all? It's just a waste of time and it's a waste of money, period. The WWE and Vince McMahon in particular have always been very big on setting narratives about telling a certain story a certain way that always ends up seeming to benefit the WWE. To the victors go the spoils, the winners are able to write the history books, the WWE have been the winners, therefore they make sure they write the history books in a clearly pro-WWE slant. And what they also do a really good job of is pounding propaganda down your throats, into your heads, and at a certain point in time, you actually start to buy into that propaganda and believe that propaganda and accept the bullshit that is being packaged to you 
as being something that is accurate and factual and not the bullshit that it actually is. And one of the big things that has always aggravated me over the years is the whole defense mechanism for Cena's consistent push at the top and his constant staying at the top is that he was a top merchandise seller in the WWE and he meant so much to the WWE and he made them so much money, especially when it comes to merchandise. It always comes back to merchandise with John Cena. Merchandise this and merchandise that and merchandise down your throat and up your ass. Well, the fact of the matter is this whole notion that John Cena is this big time money draw for the WWE is a fucking crap. The whole notion that Cena has to stay in a top spot because he sells so much more merchandise than anybody else is also a fucking crime. That's why I thought it was so great when I believe it was Conan and Court Bauer recently on their podcast uh, were talking about the fact that, you know, there's a reason why. Cena never gets outsold in merchandise is because the WWE rigs it that way and the WWE structures their system that way. Like looking back a couple of years ago, there was a period of time where Punk was starting to outsell Cena with merchandise. So what did they do? Instead of maximizing on Punk's popularity and making the most amount of money they could off of him and issuing more designs and giving him more merchandise, they cut off his designs, they restrained the access to his merchandise, made sure that it was sold out so fewer people could buy it, so that way they could redirect him to Cena, who had new designs, multiple designs, more overall merchandise. You get the fucking point. This whole notion that Cena is this big, massive money draw when it comes to merchandise is so fucking ridiculous. The reason he's such a big money draw is because the WWE puts him in that position and they don't give you any other choice. By default he is. Nobody has more overall merchandise than John Cena. Nobody has more overall merchandise designs than John Cena. Nobody has more merchandise that's actually available on the WWE shop and at live events than John Cena. Nobody's merchandise is more strongly and prominently featured, marketed, uh, promoted than John Cena. His image, his likeness, his gear, his everything. This whole notion that Cena is such a big money draw has to come to an end. It has to stop being used as a defense mechanism. Because for crying out loud, if Cena was such a big money draw, why did the WWE Network take a year to get to a million subscribers? If John Cena was such a huge money draw for the WWE, why haven't they sold out WrestleMania 31 yet? If John Cena was such a huge money draw, why don't their live events do better in terms of attendance? Why don't they more consistently sell out their shows, especially earlier on, instead of always having to do it at the last minute and having to do a bunch more comps in order to put asses in the seats? The fact of the matter is, is that John Cena is a tool, is a device for the WWE to make just enough money in order to get by, just enough money to be able to claim that they turn some type of a profit. How the fuck do you know that Cena sells more than anybody else in that spot? Because nobody's ever going to be afforded that opportunity as long as Cena's there. Nobody else is going to be given that chance as long as Cena is there. The simple fact of the matter is Cena sells the most merchandise because Vince McMahon and the WWE want it that way. It's just like you see it all the time with Vince McMahon. You look at the main event of WrestleMania 31 at the end of the day, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar one-on-one -on -one is going to be a ridiculous main event. But it's the main event that Vince McMahon wanted, so it's the main event that Vince McMahon ultimately got. For those of you that sit there and say, well, occasionally he'll listen, look at what happened at WrestleMania 30. Wrong. He still had Batista win the Royal Rumble. That was a one-time thing with changing plans and going with Daniel Bryan, and the only reason that happened was because WrestleMania 30 was going to be the first pay-per-view on Vince's new precious baby, the WWE Network, and he knew that if he had the main event be Batista and Orton and got booed out of the building, that that would be a disaster for his network, especially understanding very quickly that that network was only largely appealing to hardcore fans of professional wrestling, not the casual mainstream fans that Vince loves so much. He had to throw you a freaking bone. If he cares so much about it, if the WWE is all so much about giving opportunities, then why in the bluest of blue fucks isn't Daniel Bryan back at the main event of WrestleMania 31 when you got canceled WWE Network trending and so many of you are threatening this and talking about that? You know, you get the point. The bottom line is, is that John Cena is John Cena because the WWE wants John Cena to be John Cena. He's safe for them. He is nothing more than a prop for the brand. John Cena himself is not a moneymaker. He's not a huge merchandise seller. 
John Cena as a prop for the WWE Titan Tower machine moves merchandise and makes some money for the company because, again, the WWE demands that it be like that and robs anybody of the chance to do anything other than that. John Cena's a prop. He's not a moneymaker. It's time to stop being so goddamn stupid about this. So in what should be a surprise to absolutely none of us, apparently Rey Mysterio's WWE contract has finally come to an end, and he has parted ways with the company. This should not be a surprise. We've seen this writing on the wall for a long time. And I have to say, even though Rey really hasn't mattered in quite a period of time, maybe it's not the most popular viewpoint to have here on the internet, but I've always kind of been a fan of Rey Mysterio. I've always liked Rey Mysterio. You know, here was a guy that to me was different for the WWE with the mask, with his style of wrestling, with being that luchador, something that WWE really didn't have a lot of. I never really had a problem with Rey Mysterio. I always liked him. I always liked his work. I thought he had really good matches. You know, as he got later on in his career, I always thought he did things to help out other young talents. Sure, Mysterio would get over in his own way, too. And he would get a lot for him. But he did things to help out people along the way. I always look at uh, his feud with Cody Rhodes a few years ago heading into WrestleMania as one example of that. You know, you could do good business with Rey Mysterio. Here was a guy that was a legit top babyface for several years. Here was a guy that could move merchandise legitimately with the shirts and most especially with his masks and the other things that he had. But here was a guy, too, that not only just appealed to kids because of, you know, almost being kid size, but, you know, being kid friendly and with the mask and everything else. But I always liked about Rey Mysterio was that he had that background. He had that pedigree of going way, way back to the WCW days and, you know, being with the WWE for over a decade. So even if the hardcore adult serious male fans didn't love him, didn't even necessarily like him. He was usually a guy that always had respect. And he was a guy that people, once they got past him, always doing the 619 or the West Coast drop, whatever, West Coast pop, whatever. Um, you know, you'd be like, okay, this is a guy that could still go out there and tell a good story. He could do the flips and kicks that we love so much, but he can do more than that. He can actually work a match. He can actually tell a story in the ring with what he's doing. And I always thought that was a really good thing that Rey Mysterio did. And I do think it's a bit of a loss to the WWE. I thought it was a shame. I know it was due to injuries and other things, but I thought it was a shame that he wasn't able to do more towards the tail end of his WWE career because I thought he had more to offer the company than what they allowed him to give. And what really pissed me off is when they had him come out at entrant number 30 in the 2014 Royal Rumble, they knew that spot was going to be toxic. They knew that spot was going to be death. And they knew damn good and well that somebody like Rey Mysterio didn't deserve to be put into that situation and put into that spot. He really didn't. It was a shame on the WWE for doing that. So hopefully Ray's able to go do what he wants to do, whether that's going to go work for Lucha or go work for AAA or go do whatever the fuck he's going to do. I don't know and I don't care. But I do think it's a loss for the WWE, and I think it's a shame now when you really look at this company, um, where is that next great Hispanic star? You know, for a company that needs to branch out and grow and expand their product, expand their brand's reach, you lost one of the best international stars that you have ever had. And it doesn't really look like you have a viable option in the bullpen. That's sad. So I've told you what I think, but I want to hear from you. What do you think about the whole give divas a chance crap? What do you think about the whole narrative about John Cena needing to be at the top because of his merchandise sales? And what do you think about Rey Mysterio's departure from WWE? Let me know all of that in the comment section down below.